This is the Metallo HPT Air Spring Cordless Nailer. This is the Framer version. There are also three types of finish nailers, a brad nailer and two finish, and two framing nailers. This is the basic disassembly. This assembly of this tool is very easy. First, remove your power. Just remove the battery from the, from, the, from the tool. Also remove any fasteners that might be in the tool. Remove any fasteners that might be in the tool. Now we're going to take off the magazine, which are number four, four millimeter. So we have two bolts in the front here, the two four millimeters. Taking these two out. And the one in the back. Three bolts hold on the magazine. The clipped head version has a spacer between a spacer between the magazine and the housing. So just make sure you don't lose that. And put your magazine off to the side. Now we're gonna get our parts cup, which is basically the top end of the, of the tool. Four bolts off the top. We're going to use that to put all of our nuts and bolts in. Keep it all nice and tidy. For specifications and special tools, remember to, de to ask for your service manual from the factory service center. You have 17 screws, which are all number, number two Phillips. They're all the same size, so you don't have to worry about long screws going into short screw spots or short screws going into long screw spots. They're all the same size. Okay, so we get all those loose. Got two of them still in the holes, so I'm going to knock those out. The access cap. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up the, the housing. Pull on the back here a little bit, pull on the front, pull on the nose section, and the whole thing comes loose. The screw hole sections are facing up, so when I take this housing apart, I want to make sure that everything stays in the other half. Okay? The only thing that's left in here is this grommet that we'll, we'll take out in just a minute. This is the inner portion of the tool. Very simple. All of your wiring, you have a switch wiring harness, which is just a switch and a, and a wire plug. And then all of your other wiring from your stator around to your plugs here, all of this is one part. So if it's anything electrical, that's going to uh, switch out the majority of your problem. If it's anything uh, like a sensor, then we'll have to go deeper. Or if it's a gearbox, we'll have to take off the gearbox. Okay, if we're going to have to take off the gearbox, we're going to have to release the air. I did not put it into maintenance mode, but if we're going to get down to the driver, I can put it into maintenance mode then. And all the air is released. Go ahead and disconnect my sensor plugs. There's only three plugs here. They're all, they're all, you can't mess them up. You can't put the different plugs into different spots. Oop, and then the transmission came right off. The transmission, only turns one way. So to check the transmission, stick the rotor back in by lining up the gears. There we go, line up the gears. And it should turn clockwise. If it turns clockwise, it's fine. It does not turn counterclockwise. That's the way it operates. It only turns clockwise. Okay, so that transmission is good. If it did not turn either direction, then there's a broke gear or something wrong in the transmission itself. So now we have the rotor. I can put that back in. Don't get your fingers in between there. It will snap your fingers. 
I'm going to take a number five and take the cap off. I already released the air, so I don't have to worry about the air uh, blowing the cap off. I'm going to leave two bolts in, in there slightly. Okay, so I left two bolts in there. Oops. Oh. And you want to make put them on the opposite side, so this one didn't work. There we go. Put it on the opposite side. There we go. Take your rubber mallet, give it a tap, give it a tap, give it a tap, tap, tap. And what we're doing is we're evenly taking that cap off. We don't want to take it off one side first because that'll mess up the O-ring, it'll mess up the cap. And we've got that portion. If you look down in here, and this is kind of dry, that's a, uh, a white lithium grease. Just put a couple dabs of good lift, white lithium grease back in there. Then we're going to take the driver out and push it out. And see how the driver has teeth? Sometimes this first tooth down here will get worn out. So if it's not firing nails or it's not applying fasteners, Maybe that first tooth is worn out, or maybe the pinwheel is, is, is uh, worn out. Also make sure that there's plenty of white lithium grease around the, the, the uh, piston rings to seal up. Now we're going to take out the pinwheel. C-clip. Cap comes off. Pinwheel comes out. The way this tool operates, is that there's, it's a pinwheel. It has pins all the way around it except for one flat spot here. So the motor turns in one direction at all times. It turns in one direction. And what it does is it takes those teeth, the teeth on the piston, and it runs the, runs the piston up into the compressed air. And then when it reaches this blank spot, there's no, there's no uh, pins for the teeth to grab, and it applies your fastener. The tool continues to run in the same direction and runs the, the driver back up into at, its at rest position. And that's how it operates. The, the motor is always going in the same direction. It's never going down and back up. So that's the driver, that's everything. You rarely have to get into any more of this. You can get into the, the push lever by just popping this roll pin out unscrewing the push lever all the way off and then the secondary the C push lever comes off if you have to redo sensors these two bolts that are left in here this these two bolts and this bolt here takes off the nose section so this bolt and these two bolts take off this nose this nose here so it gets, it gets to the sensors there's one sensor right here with the white wire and one sensor down inside there with the black wire this white wire sensor is the sensor for the push lever. This little white spot right here is a magnet. That magnet, the sensor is reading the position of that magnet. Also, there's another magnet, the little white goop right there. Inside that is another magnet. The black wire lead is reading the position of this magnet so it can tell where, what position the driver is in majority of your repairs are going to be either a gearbox or a wiring that's it the rest and possibly if, if the if the driver wears out you'll have to replace a driver but you just saw how easily that, that comes out so I'm gonna put it all back together again Pinwheel slides back in, cap goes back on, C-clip, your C-clips, there's a rough side and a smooth side. The rough side is always facing out, so the pressure placed on it will make the rough side dig into the material. C-clips back in. Go ahead and position the pinwheel so the blank spot is facing the driver. I'm going to put the driver back in. And we're going to push the driver all the way down. 
So now it's in maintenance mode. So I don't have to worry about that. You put the cap back on. The bolts back in for the cap. Dump those out so I can see them. If now I'm going to put going back into reassembly. And when you're doing this, do not pinch any of these wires. These wires are extremely, they're low voltage wires that can be pinched very easily. Also, so we remember the white lithium goes on the, the piston. Regular gear grease goes in the, the pinwheel. Blue Loctite goes on the bolts. If you have to take the cylinder off, refer to the service manual. When you put the cylinder back in, it screws in and you have to use purple Loctite. Okay, so now I got all that. At this point, I've got this all sealed back up. So it's the easiest time right now to go ahead and recharge the cylinder. So I'm putting this, this is a regulator. This puts exactly how much air pressure that's needed inside the cylinder into the tool. So we screw that in, plug it to our air. We wait 10 seconds. 10 seconds allows it to equalize between the compressor and the, and the cylinder. We got that all done, it's equalized. Take it back off. Take the regulator back off. And all you should hear is a little slight loss of air. A little, there it is, right there. All that is is the, is the air pressure that's inside the tube of the regulator. And that's all you want to hear come out. If you hear more than that, then you have to go ahead and plug it back in. Now we have to put the, let's put this back on here. There we go, line that up. There's a flat side, a flat side on this plate. The flat side faces down into the housing. There's also a flat side, a flat side on the transmission that also faces down into the housing. These bumpers, brand new, they're square, but when they're used, they have a little bit of indention to them. The indention faces out away and they're going to go in between these slots in the transmission. So we have to line up these splines with these splines here and get it in between those bushings, which is not always the easiest thing. Oop, that one, that one went right on, right on. So now we have to take the rubber grommet out and put it on the cylinder. If you leave it inside the housing, it may fold up when you put the, the cylinder back in. Take your wires, gently bring them up here and hold them with your thumb. And now lean the motor up. And now we have to line up the splines of the rotor to the splines of the transmission. There we go. Now hold that grommet so it doesn't fall off and place everything down into the housing. You might have to turn the plate. There we go, we turn the plate to make sure the flat side's facing down, but everything's gonna seat down into the housing just just right. Now these wires, there's a spot where the wires go and you have to get them down in there. Do not use anything sharp. Use something very blunt to push them down into the holding spot. Before you take these wires apart, or before you take those wires out, take a look at it, take a picture of it, somewhat something to remind you of the routing, the route, the way these wires are routed through here. There's two fingers here. The wires go down between the fingers here, over here by the switch. There's two more fingers. They go down in between the fingers. And like I said, the plugs on these switches are unique to the other end, so you can't mess them up. They plug right into the right ones. If it's not plugging in, then it's not the right one. All right, go back and check your wires. See, this one came off. We're gonna put that in there between the fingers, because if it gets caught between the housing, it's going to uh, break the wire. 
and that's, not, that's gonna be no good. There's a hard fuse. Check that hard fuse. If you have loss of power or something, that hard fuse may be cracked or, or popped. If the tool is just acting uh, electronically strange, most likely it's, it's gonna be the gearbox. Or, I'm, I'm sorry, the, the controller. All right, so we're looking back. We're making sure all of our wires are in their respective spots, that they're not gonna get pinched by the housing. This other grommet that I talked about earlier, we're gonna take that back off. We're gonna put it on the cylinder also. Because it's easier for the grommet to slide into this plastic portion of the housing than it is for that metal part to slide into the grommet. All right, now we're gonna line everything up. I'm gonna look down through my screw holes and line them up with my other screw holes. I'm watching the entire thing, making sure Look back here at your battery terminals. There is a slot that they have to slide down through. Make sure that you're sliding down that slot. Okay. Your seams should all come together. All right, see your seams are all coming, all coming together. And if they don't come together, then that means that there's something in the way, a wire or something's not in the right place. Just make sure that all those seams go back in the right spot. We're gonna go back to our number two Phillips, and we're gonna drop in these screws without stripping them out. Make sure everything functions as you go. Sometimes the trigger will get bound when you're putting the housing back together again. So before you get all the screws back in, just make sure that trigger moves freely. You see, this is, in this short time period, I went all the way down to the transmission and the, the, uh, the piston driver. So it does not take long. This is a very simple tool to work on. And like I said, if you don't understand, if you're reading through this, the service manual and you don't understand something, you can call our technical support line and ask any questions you have. The technical support, the, we're, the guys in the shop, we're here from uh, Monday through Friday. 7 to 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, I already put air in it when the, when the whole thing was out, so I don't have to put air in it now. We're gonna put this cap on here. I mean, you can do it. You can access the airport from here. Oh, don't forget to put your plug in. That plug is a five millimeter, to put that in. A little bit of grease on the O-rings of that plug helps keep it, keeps them from drying out. Number two Phillips. Nope, I missed a screw. Make sure you got all your screws in all your spots. There you go. That's in. So I'm gonna put my magazine back on. Like this, I'm gonna put the spacer in there. Line it up with the hole. Carefully put this on here. Without messing up that spacer. That spacer's got to go back in there, so don't forget it. That's that one. A oh, little bit of blue Loctite. Oh, got to switch over to the number four. Four millimeter for these bolts. I'm going to put that in there just so it's a little loose, so I can have some playroom with the front here. Blue Loctite. Don't put, no, not a whole bunch, just a little dab will do you. 
to get that to get to this hole here to get to the hole here that's right here take the push lever push it back a little bit so you can or the the magazine the feeder put that back a little bit so you can put this bolt in and then a little bit of torque get not a whole lot and get this don't forget your back one that one's back in now we're going to switch over to our number five and put our top cap back on. Sometimes these brass inserts will fall out in the top. Just make sure you don't lose them. Just put them back on there. No big deal. Sometimes they fall off, sometimes they don't. There, and that's all back together again. This is back in this is in maintenance mode still, so we want to take it out of maintenance mode, put a battery on it, turn the tool on, push the button, push and hold the power for one sec, more than one second. We're gonna put the push lever on the edge. So the driver goes past your thing. There we go. And now it's ready to go. That was pretty much full disassembly and reassembly, except for the nose. And you, there's not too many repairs that, that have, have to do with that. Worn out drivers, yes. A broken pin in the pinwheel, maybe. Uh, broken gears every now and then. Controllers. But you can see how easy this was to do. Not hard at all. Refer to the service manual if you have questions. Or call us on the tech line. Nothing to it.